Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just hanging out in the nicely newly heated grow space. It's so warm, so toasty, I absolutely love it. Picked up a peperomia at the nursery yesterday. I was there to get some seed starting mix for, for this, for what's happening here in this video. And I walked out into their greenhouse and there wasn't much because it's that time of year. It's absolutely frigid. It's four degrees outside right now. It is freezing cold. It's a watermelon peperomia, pretty common. Larger leaves, really nice, striking stripage. So pretty, needs some love. It's kind of wonky. Try not to mess with it too much until I get it repotted. I also just realized that I don't even have this pot set up correctly. Need to give that a twist. Okay, that's enough of that. The seeds that I am starting here are the artichokes. Two different types here, the Green Globe and the Colorado. <laughs> Why did I have trouble saying that? Colorado Red Star. And then these really adorable orange hat tomatoes. Aren't these adorable? These only get, I think it said six to nine inches tall. It's a super dwarf tomato, fruity sweetness, perfect for growing indoors or on the patios and edible ornamental embeds. Start six to 10 weeks before last frost. Six to 10 weeks is just about exactly where we are. They sell these at the big box stores, usually fully grown plants on these adorable tiny trellises. So I could just wait and purchase one, but it's so much fun growing tomatoes here in this grow space. They normally do very, very well out here. I don't even typically have to start the seeds myself. Normally they just show up on my plant rack, spread by birds or the dogs. They'll eat tomatoes and the seeds go flying about and usually I'll end up with at least one tomato plant that's hanging out inside of a pot with another house plant and I just let it go. They almost always grow flower fruit and taste pretty good. Same thing with peppers. I have some peppers. I'm not going to start them quite yet though. I figured this would be more appropriate for indoor culture because they're cute. And this way there will be some plants that are already nice and big to move out into the garden or give away in the springtime. They will probably need a heavy prune to keep them looking nice for the rest of the season since I'm starting them just a smidge early. It really isn't even that early, six to 10 weeks before last frost. That's right about where we are. Our last frost is normally like April 15th, somewhere in there, but weather here is really weird. Last year it snowed on April 28th, I believe. That, that, that's not normal, but it happened. So now I'm very paranoid about the growing seasons here. Seven to 14 day germination time for them to go ahead and sprout 75 to 95 degrees. That's their ideal temperature. They're not going to have any issues getting that out here. It is nice and toasty out here now, uh, especially if I put them on the top shelf of my grow rack. The lower rack is cooler because you know cold air settles. So that's where the rest of these seeds are going to go, which are the artichokes. Artichokes and uh, one more that I forgot to mention, which is this ornamental oregano. There's no picture here, but I'll hold that right there so you can read it for a moment. Feel free to pause if you'd like to. There we go. Did you, did you pause it? Did you read it? I don't know. Here's a picture of it. The ornamental oregano. It's absolutely beautiful plant. They look really nice in small hanging baskets. So I wanted to get some of them started now for, well, there's actually a lot to say about it. I will probably talk about it as I'm planting them up. It's more of just a timing issue, trying to figure out what would pair fairly well together to get growing now, have some things out here for fun, like the oregano, because oregano typically sprouts very quickly, this is four to five days for germination. Yeah, really fast, really fun, easy to grow herb, even though it's not an edible one. This one isn't. I guess it's probably edible, just more than likely doesn't taste very good. So it's not palatable. Anyways, I'm gonna be happy about having a good amount of those to go in like around April or so. I can pop them into some hanging baskets and they'll be looking nice. I will likely have to move them out of the seed flats before the artichokes, but that's okay. I'll just bump them up into a larger container. The artichokes have two different types here. The green globes are the most likely to go ahead and give some fruit the first year to actually put out that rosette and look really pretty. The back of this says that they do best with long, cool summers. I've never had that be an issue. I do not have long, cool summers. So that's something that I'll look into more. Actually, I won't, there's no reason to. I've grown them plenty of times, so that's never been an issue. So that's good to know, but I, the reason I'm starting them so early is that they can have a cool period during their seedling state. I'll talk about that later some more too. And then I have the Red Star right here, which has more of a violet, kind of purpley choke on it. This one's supposed to be more of a sturdy grower than uh, some of the others. The Green Globe is a pretty sturdy grower. Not normally a 
difficult plant to grow. The red star from their description on the back. Red star is supposed to be a little bit more ornamental. Both of them take 10 to 21 days to germinate. Usually my experience is it's more towards the 21 days on germination with the artichoke, 60 to 80 degrees, quarter of an inch to half an inch down to the soil. And then, you know, all the other stuff. They like full sun. I'm growing the artichokes more as an ornamental. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. I love artichoke plants. They remind me a fair amount of acanthus, acanthus mollus, really more acanthus spinosa, but acanthus are one of my favorite perennials and the artichokes are kind of a good dupe for them if you can't really grow the acanthus. Acanthus don't do well for me. I've never had great luck with them, but maybe I should try them again because I have different light now than I used to. My yard gets a lot more morning sun and afternoon shade because the trees have grown, the backyard anyways, but these are going to go in the front. I can talk more about that as get these started up. Go ahead and do that. I have all my seed starting stuff out here. It's a little bit early to get going on seeds, depending on what you're growing, but typically I don't usually start many seeds until like mid-February. I'm on 6A, 6B right on the line in St. Louis, and typically it depends, but generally like eight to 10 weeks is where I'll start a lot of plants eight to 10 weeks out from the last frost. But that's also really more applicable for typical annual things that you grow from the seeds. There are some things that need to go into the ground sooner than others. Just like last year, gotta get going on the artichokes. I'm starting about a month earlier, maybe two and a half, three weeks earlier than last year. So with the artichokes, I like to get them going earlier because they need a chill period in order to flower properly. I absolutely love growing artichokes. Didn't have the best of luck last year because they got eaten. Isn't an issue that I normally have, but the plants got chewed right down to the ground by some rabbits. I also transplanted them out fairly early. They're only a couple inches tall. I think if I were to wait just a smidge longer to transplant them out, then I probably wouldn't have that same issue because the artichokes are kind of spiky. Usually the critters will leave them alone once they get spiky rabbit and from what I'm told deer. I hope the deer will leave them alone. Ooh, I hope I didn't put too much water in here. I may have, might be a little bit too wet, but if I give that a turn, flip it over and give it a moment to absorb, I bet it'll soak up a lot of that moisture. Anyways, with the artichokes, I'm going to plant them in my front yard this year, which is where the risk of them being chewed up and eaten by deer comes into play. Is there water dripping out of those? Yeah. I'm new to having to deal with deer in gardening. From what I've read online, it seems like the consensus is that deer typically will leave artichokes alone. I don't know, comment down below and let me know your experiences with that. I do hope that's the case because I don't really have the sun in my backyard for artichokes anymore. My front yard still gets plenty of sun. I'm gonna scoot that back, give it a moment to soak up some more water. So that's what's going on with the artichokes. Going in the front yard, hopefully the deer will leave them alone. That's something I love about artichokes is that the plants themselves, I find to be very beautiful and ornamental. They have a lovely rosette shape to them. And then when they put the chokes up, the flowers show up, they tend to really draw the eye in. So I have a spot in my front yard where there's a path that leads up to the front door and uh, I'm going to put something tall on each side and then have artichokes going around there and then plant some sort of flowering annual in front of those. The artichoke, at least I believe the red star, that's this one right here. I believe this one has more of a silvery blue foliage on it, which is what I prefer. The green globe does as well. It's not quite as extreme. So I'm going to plant a mixture of these, which I would really like to just stick with one for uniformity. But this packet says low germination, 54%. That's pretty awful. I'm kind of surprised we're even selling it. There's 30 seeds in there paid for 15. So I guess they compensated for that in a sense. It's not one I can put off until next year. I've, since it has such a low germination rate, I think it'd be best to go ahead and plant them up. So I'm going to plant in excess, give away the ones that I am not going to use and we'll see what happens with them. And now I'll go ahead and start trying to get these cells filled up here. So the artichokes to get them flowering, they need, uh, I believe it's like two weeks where nighttime temperatures will be between 45 and 50, somewhere in there. And that's kind of difficult to come by in my area because our spring times, it's usually frigid and then very warm and then frigid and then very warm. Typically in April here, there will be a, a, a few weeks where the lows will be in the 40s 
and that will be their chill period. But the thing is that the plants need to be somewhat up and going. I don't want them out there as like fresh starts. I would prefer for them to be reasonably sized, like at least I would say uh, two sets of uh, maturing leaves, not the seedling leaves that don't have to be big. They don't have to be huge, but I just don't want too many of those very, very tender, tiny leaves on the plants. I'm sure you know what I mean there. So I'll be able to give them that chill period sometime in April and then grow them out some more and hopefully have them in the ground early May into the front yard. So that's the thing for them to be more resistant, hopefully to the deer and the rabbits. I want them to be not mature, but fairly larger plants. They will have been moved up out of these little two inch cells by then for sure. Cause I, don't, I can't imagine they'd really get much growth in these little packs. They usually don't. I am using a different seed starting mix than normal, which it does seem quite nice. I had to drive around to find seed starting mix. It was sold out at most of the nurseries and big box stores. Usually, I mean, I'm not usually too picky about my seed starting mix. I prefer it just be something that's going to hold on to some moisture, be light and breathable and not like over full of organics because you know, you don't want them dampening off. Mostly just needs to be a nice clean and sterile mix. Yeah, here's that Fox Farm mix hanging out on the ground over there. It says Light Warrior Seed Starter, it says it has the mycorrhiza in it, humic acid and yeah. We will see. It better be good though, because that was expensive, <laughs> like really pricey. It's one of those beggars can't be choosers kind of moments because I wasn't finding just the regular like Jiffy Espoma miracle Grow stuff that I would usually use. I just hope it's not loaded up with too many things. From reading the package, it sounds like there's a lot in that mix and I don't really want a lot in a seed starting mix because I want to keep it sterile. Right, want to help keep things clean. So the whole point is just to get them started, not to keep them going for too terribly long. As they start to get to some maturity, it's best to get them out and move them into a mix that is going to encourage more root growth and make for bigger, sturdier plants. No, that's not something everybody can do, right? Because a lot of people start a ton of seeds. I'm mostly a seed scatterer. I don't like to start too many things inside because I just find them to be tedious. You know, you've missed one watering, they dry out for just a couple hours too much and boom, all, all your hard work's gone. Uh, so I do prefer the seed starters that have a self wicking mat underneath them that cuts down the work with watering them a lot. I mean, buys you like a couple days in between waterings, I find. I also filled my cells lower. Every year I try and remember to pack them down lower. That makes it easier for me, I find, to come in and give the plants a good watering without the water splattering out from cell to cell. Having a lip in there helps contain that water so it doesn't flush around. That's really nifty with really, really tiny fine seeds you don't want moving around. Makes a big difference. That and everything I'm putting in here, I'm going to be putting a layer of vermiculite on top, the back of the package suggested to do so, so need to have a little buffer layer to have that in there as well. Spent a long time trying to organize my thoughts as to what to get going when the artichokes, I was like, all right, need to get on that now. Really kind of would prefer to do it a couple weeks ago because I would like to get them fairly matured before they go into the ground for all this stuff I mentioned before. And then uh, I also got, a, which I think are adorable, aren't these just darling? Bunny ear viola, but I think I waited too long on these. Pansies take a really long time to mature, and I would want these to be matured and flowering by like late March, and that's probably not going to happen. It's a 60 to 85 day, and I've had them take even longer than that before. So the issue here with those violas is that by the time they'll be ready and flowering, will probably be more like late April into mid-May. And that's when pansies and violas tend to start to weather and not look so great where I live. It's when the heat starts to roll in for summertime. And I didn't allow time for cold stratifying. I don't always cold stratify pansies, but if I'm starting them indoors, it's usually a good idea. They also need to be like kept dark until they start to germinate. And it's just, it's a whole thing. They're not that complicated. They just require more patience. I will probably do with these is just hold on to them and I will use these for a fall crop, start them in. I don't know, probably August, something like that indoors. And then by September, well, maybe I should start. We'll get to that when it's time. I spent too much time thinking about it over the last couple of days. I'm not gonna waste y'all's time talking about it when I'm not even gonna do it right now. This entire flat is going to be moving outside in April, at least for a couple of weeks to get that chill. I can only plant other things in here that can handle that 
chill. So uh, I'm also going to put this oregano in here. Although by the time April comes around, I will probably need to pull the oregano out. So same difference, that still works out just fine. The oregano, I would imagine by then these will need to be moved up, stepped up into a larger size container. Thinking for the green globes, I'm probably just going to go with two seeds per cell. I usually have good germination with these, though I haven't ordered them from Baker Creek before. Usually I get them from like Eden Brothers or maybe it's Johnny Seeds, I can't remember. I thought about doing three per cell, but that shouldn't, I don't think it's necessary. I only need for what I'm going to do in my front yard with those, I need six. So I have them planted up here in 10 cells. That should be good. Go ahead and pop a label in there before I forget. That's not in focus. That means the red stars will start right around there. And because the red stars are supposed to have such terrible germination, I'm gonna go with, I think, four per cell. That way, hopefully, every single cell will have something growing in it. And now for the oregano, which starts right here. Here we go. <laughs> the fun things about oregano, there's 100 seeds in this tiny little packet. It says to plant four to six seeds per cell, but when they're this tiny, I'm not usually very good at counting them out. It's more of a spray and pray kind of situation because you can't even see them. It's even pointless to even film this part. You have no idea where, oh, wrong direction. Oops, all right. So there might be some oregano popping up in there with those artichokes. Not the end of the world, I can pull those up. There's going to be probably more than four to six of these per cell, but that's fine. I will more than likely be starting more of those later on in the season, like April, May-ish, something like that. There are plenty of leftover there. Now I'm just going to go through and poke those artichoke seeds down a little bit deeper. They need to be about a quarter of an inch to half an inch down. So they like to be thoroughly covered. I'll just give them a little, little squish, little gentle push. That's why it's best to not pack the soil down too much, right? So you don't squish the seeds when you push them down. I'm making sure to do this with the artichokes before those oregano seeds. If I do the oregano seeds first, then I know that I'm gonna end up carrying the seeds over even more so into these other patches. Then this entire flat will have oregano popping up everywhere. Oh, and the other reason that I didn't want to overfill these is so that there's room to go ahead and add soil to the top. Probably should have mentioned that before. Oops. And then the last thing I do before I add my top coat is just make sure that the cells, the soil depth is about the same all the way across. There can be a slight variance, but just don't want it to be too drastic. That helps keep things easier with watering, basically. Don't want a cell that doesn't have very much soil in it. That's going to dry out a lot faster than the others. When they're on the wicking mat, it really shouldn't make that much of a difference. If you have to water from the top, then usually a good idea to make sure they're about even. Now I'm just putting the vermiculite on top when a little bit heavy in some of those spots, I'm going to try and spread that out. <laughs> this giant clump here, I'm gonna take some of that. Move it down here. The vermiculite just helps to hold in some moisture, helps keep things a little bit more stable for the seedlings, and to some degree, helps to ward off issues with like algae and those things growing on top of the soil surface. Now I can go ahead and take this entire flat here and put that down into its tray. Don't need this yet. Don't need that until the plants are actually up and going and need that moisture for now. They can just sit in there nice and snug. And those are good to go. Nothing left to do with those. Oh, except had I remembered my water bottle, I would miss the top of that vermiculite. That seed mix is pretty damp right now, so it should be fine. It's good to mist it though, because that helps keep it in place and then hold that moisture in for the seedlings, but I'll do it just. Not right now. I will do that off camera. So for the green globes ended up with 10 cells of those, the red stars, I believe there's four, five, six, seven, eight with those. And then there are six of those ornamental oreganos. And like I said, the oregano that's in there, I would imagine that that will probably all have been removed and transplanted out by the time it's time to take these artichokes outside for their chill. Heck, the artichokes might even be bumped up into something larger by the time it's time to get them outside for their chill. I don't know, we will have to wait and see. I should have mentioned both of these are okay to get started on a more cool note artichokes. I've never really had to mess with their temperature, putting them on a heat mat or anything like that. The oregano is the same way. I even think the packet here the packets are always our best friends with starting the seeds. Says 65 to 68. 
that's nice and cool. And then uh, grow off 60 to 65. So more on the cool side for the oregano, that's pretty typical with oregano. The artichokes I think should be okay with that. If not, then I can just lift and scoot and rearrange. But out of all the seeds I ordered, this was the best pairing I could come up with for now to fill up the tray. I guess I didn't have to fill up the tray, but there's something fun about growing oregano. I just kind of wanted it out here in the grow space. And I wanted some that would be large enough in the springtime to uh, move into hanging baskets. So that shouldn't be an issue. There should be more than enough time to get these out of those cells and popped into a basket and get those baskets nice and full by like May, somewhere in there. Okay. Last seeds, go ahead and do those. Right, so I went ahead, put my potting mix in here and uh, I, it's soaking in some water. I didn't feel like getting my hands dirty mixing it up again. So I'm just gonna let it wick some of that up and I'll give it a little bit of a blend. This is all for the orange hat tomatoes right here. With the tomatoes, I tend to like to start them in something larger just because they usually have a good amount of vigor. And uh, I've noticed once they're like four to six inches tall, the seed blend doesn't do much for them. That's another reason that I don't have these filled very high so that in probably, I would guess like four to six weeks, sometime around there is when I will want to be able to top dress these with compost and kind of blend it down in there some more. It's not going to need to be as much of a sterile blend once they have like two or three sets of mature leaves. Not as sterile as just like a typical seed mix that is. That's a little low though. That's not going to be enough. Now, typically I know we like to start our seeds in a smaller container and there's a good reason for that because you don't want too much moisture around the roots. Like they need it to be consistently moist but not sopping wet and uh, you run the risk of root rot and different fungal issues if you start something in too large of a container. But my experience with tomatoes has always been that typically whatever I put them in, they grow. So this is more of an experiment, just starting them off in something larger. And then since these orange hats stay so small, I just figured it'd be easier just to go ahead and start them off something with a little bit more size on it. Whoa, there's a whole bunch of seeds stuck to the adhesive. I hate when that happens. All right, okay. It's a lot more than I had intended on for those, but it's fine, it's okay. I can thin them out. Then the soil is actually a little bit drier this round, so I'm going to go ahead Water them in lightly, and that's fine, because that's going to help push those seeds down just below the surface. Not going to hurt anything. There we go, and that's it. None of the plants that I potted up today need light to get going, so I don't have to rush to get them under the grow lights or anything like that. They're just going to chill out. Once I start to see some sprouts on them, then I'll make sure that they're moved under the grow lights. Actually, might move them under right away, actually. It's not going to hurt them since they're covered and they're down below the soil. Maybe I'll add a little bit of vermiculite on top of the tomatoes just to keep them from getting cooked under the grow lights. The grow lights stay on for, I think they're on for 12, maybe 13 hours. I can't remember what I'm scheduled for. They're LED, so I don't shift them up or down, anything like that. The tomatoes typically do very well in here in this grow space, tomatoes and peppers. I think I already mentioned that when talking about the seeds here. So that's all there is to it. Feels nice to get some things planted, have some soil on my fingers. Looking forward to seeing things getting going and watch the progress. Really mostly excited tomatoes. I have so much fun growing tomatoes in here. I do think that there's probably way too many seeds in each one of those. They just kind of fell out. It just sort of happened. I only intended on putting two or three seeds in each one of these, and I think there's more like five or six. So it's a good thing that these are larger containers. I'll let them get up to a reasonable size, and before I think they'll be too cramped together, I can separate them apart. But I'd intended on saving the majority of those seeds for like late spring into summer to plant them outside. But yeah, that's fine. This is okay. Okay, that's everything. That's pretty much all that I think would be okay to get started this early in the season. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. Anything y'all have started indoors yet? Got some plants that are slow to get going or need a chill period, like I had mentioned, for the actual foliage and the roots, not just the seeds. Let me know, tips, tricks, suggestions to seed starting, always appreciated and thank you for it. Always helps everybody down there in the comments. You can see what other people are doing with their plants. Not the most exciting things to look at, just soil and pots. But soon enough, there will be plants to look at. I'm looking forward to it. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.